Chocolate chip cookies are those typical American cookies with bits of chocolate in them. They're a real treat for everyone, both young and old, and there's always a good reason to put them on the table. They've been around since 1930 and they're still everyone's favourite. There are many different sorts of cookies. I've got three ready for you. The traditional cookies with pieces of dark chocolate and the more healthy ones filled with blueberries. Or if you want to go totally wild, airy white chocolate cream filled cookies topped with lemon frosting. More than 80 years ago, the chocolate chip cookies were invented by some lady called Madame Wakefield. Not that important to us right now, because all we want to do is to get started on those delicious American cookies. The foundation is fairly simple. I start with the stalk, which is ideal for baking already at room temperature. And because not everybody can remember to take it out the fridge a day ahead, 10 to 20 seconds in the microwave can also make sure the stalk is nice and soft to work with. I need 200 grams. One hundred and twenty-five grams of vanilla sugar. As you can see, there's still some vanilla pods in there. Now you could, of course, also use normal sugar and maybe add some of the vanilla to the recipe yourself afterwards. But after the sugar, we can add the flour. I use two hundred and fifty grams. And I also add some baking powder, uh, about a spoonful. And then the one thing that turns this recipe into a real cookie recipe, and that is oat flakes. Now, 75 grams or a spoonful of oat flakes. We might know them from our cereal breakfast or from the cookies themselves. And in this case, to use oat flakes yourself, they prove to be a convenient ingredient as well. We're almost done. Just add one egg, and then we can start mixing. A kitchen robot or a mixer is, of course, an option, but I'd rather stick to my principle that baking cookies is manual labor. So I'm gonna wash my hands and get started with these two. There you go. Now that's what I call baking. and gradually you can see the stalk mixing with the sugar, the flour and the oats until it becomes cookie dough. I can already hear you think, cookie dough without chocolate? That's not chocolate chip cookies, is it? Well, you're absolutely right, of course. We can add our final ingredient, what I have here, are the real so-called chocolate chips. Small pieces of chocolate with good heat resistance, making sure you can really see every separate bit of chocolate. Another option, obviously, is to chop up a normal bar of chocolate and add that to your dough. About 100 grams, but feel free to choose your own amount of chocolate in the cookies. And uh, no need for restraint here. Now, with this basic dough, we can make the traditional chocolate chip cookies. Afterwards, we can fill them with white chocolate ganache. I'll start by baking the cookies right now, and for that we need a baking tray. And although it's not essential, we'll put some baking paper on it just to make sure. Now, I use this small trick of spreading a bit of stalk in every corner to make sure the paper isn't going anywhere and a large sheet of baking paper on top. Unlike other cookie dough, we don't need to cut or squirt the dough onto the tray. No, we can easily mold them on our baking paper. The traditional method uses two coffee spoons to put the dough in its place. That is an appropriate option. We just make small blobs of dough to, well, about the size of a cherry. But if you want to be more efficient, the ice cream scoop is your man. And this one right here is a small one, again, about the size of a cherry, but it's the instrument you need to start your own cookie factory. Nicely patting them 
And that way, it's very easy to make blobs of the same size, which is ideal to make sure they all need the same time in the oven. That's why all the cookies will turn out perfect with the same golden brown colour. Now, don't worry about the shape of the cookies. They will settle till they reach that perfect round cookie shape we want. They can now hit the oven at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're ready for the more refined work and can get started on the cookie filling. Now, believe me, this will taste like heaven. The starting point is a traditional ganache, but instead of using dark chocolate, I'm using white chocolate. And I can hear you thinking, Ganache what? Ganache is a kind of chocolate sauce, but it's a little bit thicker. It's often used for covering chocolate cakes, for example. Now, what do we need for that? Heavy cream, just one cup. And I'm heating it carefully until it boils. And just make sure the temperature is not too high because we don't want our cream to burn. No, we want a white chocolate ganache which is nice and pearly. And once the cream is boiling, we just take it off the stove and I will add about the same amount, about 250 grams of small white chocolate bits to the hot cream. Now the heat of our cream will make the white chocolate melt soft and silky and turn into the chocolate ganache we want. And to put on the finishing touches, I add the seeds of a vanilla pot. Then give it a proper stir. I could let this ganache set in the fridge if I wanted a heavy chocolate mass, but I want a light mousse for our cookies, so I'll do it differently. What I'm going to do is let it cool in a double basin filled with ice. Not without good reason. While it cools, I will whip it up for a really light chocolate mousse result. I'm starting gently, gradually lowering the temperature of the ganache. Of course, we need to bear in mind that this is cream we're whisking. And we don't really want it to harden, do we? Meanwhile, we're killing two birds with one stone because on the one hand, our ganache has cooled down nicely to body temperature, and on the other hand, it has become a light mousse. So, what else do we need? Sweet, white, and light. And in the meantime, I can hear our cookies screaming, they're ready. I can really smell them. And yes, nicely crisp, golden brown, and the inside still a little bit tender because of the oat flakes inside. I'll take a grid like this for the cookies to sit on and cool. And that brings us to the last phase, filling the cookies. We've got crispy cookies, airy, white chocolate, and now I'm making the finishing touch. Some lemon on top. We only need some lemons and icing sugar. Yep. We're making traditional icing or frosting, but instead of adding a bit of water, I'm putting in lemon juice.
I'm already starting with the juice of just that one lemon because adding too much liquid is a common mistake, making it too runny. The three components are ready. We've got our cookies, our white chocolate ganache, and our lemon glaze. The only thing we need to do now is to, without exaggerating, fill our cookies. I take both halves and use a spoon for adding the cream. Naturally, you could also use a piping bag for this, but in this case... It's important that the cookies have cooled enough, otherwise you risk your ganache becoming runny again. And uh, that would be a shame. We put the cream on these halves and can now put the other ones on. And we can easily top our cookies by carefully dipping them in the icing and making it set. So we can leave it there till later. So, dip, twist, and let it set. And that's how our cookies not only get a luxuriously looking top, the lemon also gives them a refreshing and stingy taste. Here you are, icing on the top, sprinkling on some green garnishing, and our extraordinary tasteful chocolate cookies with white chocolate cream are ready. And if you don't want to eat them immediately or maybe want to use them as a gift, my one advice would be put them in a safe place. Enjoy. Enjoy.